Hello, my friends. Welcome to a new podcast on You Can Get Over It. How to confront, forgive, and move on. This is your pastor, Yati. Our first chapter is everyone has opportunities to get offended or upset. Maybe you are seeking answers about how to deal with bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. Everyone has had to deal with these issues at one time or another. So as we get started, I want you to know first of all that you're not alone in your struggles to combat these internal problems of bitterness and resentment. You also don't need to feel embarrassed about your dilemma because it's something that everyone faces at some point in his or her life. But at some, the same time, you shouldn't accept unforgiveness as an inevitable part of your life. With the help found, as we move on together with these sessions, you can walk free of these negative attitudes that have kept you bound. I urge you to stay with me all the way through the end of all these sessions of this new podcast. You can get over it. I intend you to take you on a path that will show you how to permanently uproot and remove bitterness, resentment and unforgiveness from your life. All temptations can be beaten. You just have to make up your mind that you're going to be the conqueror and not the conquered. This is certainly true when it comes to conquering the temptation to get upset or resentful toward someone. You may not have realized it before, but getting hurt and offended is a temptation. It's a moment when something happens or a thought enters your mind that induces you to get upset or to become angry. Those thoughts and emotions act as a stimulant to get you all stirred up. Nevertheless, in that moment, you're consciously aware that you can let the temptation to be offended pass you by. Or you can allow the thoughts to fester in your mind and emotions until the offense becomes a major issue. It's a choice you make. It's similar to a sexual temptation. You can choose to run and look the other way. Or you can dwell on that temptation until it fills your mind and imagination. And likewise, if you choose to meditate on a perceived offense, it won't be too long until the devil convinces you that you've been wronged or treated unjustly and that you have every right to nurse that grudge. If you don't put the brakes on those thoughts, your relationship with that person or group of people will soon be negatively affected by hurt feelings, offense, and grievance. This is certain to happen, whether the offense is real or imagined. And the truth is, most 
grievances are more imagined than real. Most offenses result from a misunderstanding or miscommunication that is blow way out of the proportion rather than a direct attack from others. And you should very much know that the devil is a mind manipulator. The devil is a master when it comes to mind manipulation. He knows that if he can get you to spend a little time meditating on a wrong that was done to you, that perceived wrong will be blown out of proportion until you finally become ensnared in bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. Remember Satan? Then the archangel Lucifer was kicked out of heaven because of his ability to create confusion and discord. Heaven is a perfect as an environment can be. Yet in that perfect environment, Lucifer was able to convince heavenly angels with him smooth but totally slanderous allegations against God. Angels who had worshipped together for aeons of time and suddenly stood opposed to each other over non-existent issues the devil had conjured up in their minds. And Satan was so adept or distorting truth that he was able to lure one third of them into rebelling against Almighty God. If the devil is persuasive enough to deceive brilliant, mighty, powerful angels, how much easier do you think it is for him to deceive humans? Who live in a far from perfect environment and wrestle daily with their own imperfection and with the imperfections of others? The emotional makeup of human beings make them even more susceptible to the devil's masterful skills of lying, deception, and manipulation. Satan watches for the right timing and then strikes at an opportunity moment. He waits until you're tired, weary, or exasperated. And perhaps you woke up in a bad mood, someone gave you a look you didn't like, or you just started your day off on the wrong foot and suddenly someone does something totally unexpected that you don't like something that takes you off guard and by surprise at first you're shocked then you start to feel hurt as the day passes and you keep thinking about what happened the hurt turns into anger and before you know it that event is so exaggerated in your mind, you can no longer see it in its true perspective. And then, that's when the devil whispers his lies to your mind. He may tell you, you've been so mistreated. If anyone has a reason to be offended, it's you. No one appreciates you. All you do is give, give and give. What do you get in return? Nothing. You ought to back out of everything you're doing and what you're doing and just let people sit in their own mess. After all you've done to show your love and to sacrifice for others, what have others done for you? You ought to just walk out on all these ingrates you've been serving and trying to help. They don't appreciate you anyway. It's totally misunderstandable that your feelings are hurt. Hang on to this offense and don't ever let anyone hurt you like this again. When thoughts like this delude your mind, you need to know that it's Satan setting a trap in front of you. He is trying to ensnare you so he can cripple you emotionally and cut you off from the people you love. 
He's trying to get you to bite the bait so he can set the hook. You don't have to fall into this trap anymore if you really want to escape this emotional quandary there is a way out first corinthians 10 verse 13 promises there had no temptation taken you but such as is coming to man but god is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. This verse says that God will make a way for you to escape any temptation that comes against you. This even includes those moments when you're tempted to get upset with someone or to allow your feelings to get hurt. You don't have to give in the temptation to become offended. You don't have to feel crushed and hurt when others fail your expectations of them. You don't have to continue living in a prison of bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. Millions of Christians are held captive by bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness because they will not determine to do what is necessary to live free of offense. As a result, they have no joy, no peace, and no victory in their lives. They may be Christians, but they're miserable because they haven't made the choice to jump through the escape hatch God had provided for them and leave all that negative garbage behind. God will make a way for you to escape but you are the only one who can make the choice to jump through that escape hatch he has prepared for you. If you say yes to the Lord, he will show you how to live totally free from bitterness and unforgiveness. That's right. You can avoid every temptation to take offense. You never have to get dragged into destructive emotions feelings and attitudes so many Christians are inwardly miserable because they keep pushing the rewind button in their minds they keep going back and replaying every grievance that was ever done to them they have replayed these offenses in their minds over and over again if that describes you here's what you need to understand you are the only one who can choose to walk away from these deadly attitudes. The moment you make that decision, your journey to freedom has begun. So today, the Lord is asking you, are you going to stay the way you are right now? Or are you willing to take the proper steps to escape from these emotional temptations? and demonic trap are you ready to give up all unforgiveness laying at the foot of the cross so you can walk free or will you continue to cling to that resentment and turmoil will you remain a hostage to those attitudes that cripple you spiritually mentally and physically what is your answer what are you going to do God is waiting for you to decide whether you will receive the freedom he is offering you or remain a hostage for the rest of your life the choice is yours to make So think about it. An offense may have shaped your past, but you don't have to allow it to define your future. God's plan for you is brighter and better than anything that was damaged, stolen or lost in your life due to disappointment or any sort of wounding offense. 
Are you willing to trust God to help you get past the pain and move forward? What are the ways you can cooperate with him by adjusting your outlook, attitudes, actions, or words? Whenever you've been wronged, violated, slandered, betrayed, lied to, rejected, or harmed, that's when you must focus your intention on God's promises to you. In what way does the offense that challenges you stand in direct defense that what God has either said about you or provided for you? What specific thoughts have dominated your mind that you need to exchange for God's thoughts as you can finally get over whatever the it is in your life. So my dear friends, I'm giving you a lot to think about. And remember, you're not alone in the boat. Everyone, everyone can say, I've been there. The question is, are we going to stay there? May this that I offer give you solutions to get out of the traps. And have a better future. May God help you and the Spirit convince you where things need to be taken on that make a change where you make the choice. God's blessings. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye-bye.